We're going to start by going through some of that vocabulary that's important with arrays before we move forward and talk about how that works with actually using it in multiplication. So can I have a volunteer read today's? Hello. Let's see. I'll do it. Okay, go ahead, CJ. Our goal today is to be able to represent multiplication equations and solve multiplication problems using arrays. Very good, thank you. So that means being able to look at an equation and show what that looks like as an array, but then also if you get a multiplication problem, you can kind of actually draw an array or create an array to help you solve it. So when we look at that, there's a couple things I want to talk about what, how they apply to an array. All right, so can somebody besides CJ read the definition of an array? And Clay, go ahead. And those words are a rectangular arrangement. So go ahead and you can read that for us, Clay. An array is a rectangular arrangement of objects, our pictures, that is arranged into equal columns and rows. Thank you, sir. So it's super important when we talk about an array to recognize the difference between a row and a column. So I'm going to grab my Promethean pen here and circle it just a little bit more in detail so you can see it. A row is something that goes straight across from left to right. So right here in green, this is a row. These top three that go, go left to right, that's a row. A column is something that goes vertically, so up and down. And so this section right here on the array that I'm circling is a column. All right, so rows go left to right, columns go vertically. Horizontal is a row. It's horizontal, left and right, vertical, up and down is a column. So how, do those, how does that work with representing an array and multiplication? So we're going to look in um, to understand a multiplication equation for an array. We're going to actually look at the number of rows and by the number of columns and be able to multiply using that. So can somebody raise their hand and tell me how many rows do you see in this array that is pictured? How many rows are in that array? Somebody besides Clay or CJ, because they've, Corbin, go ahead. How many rows? Three. Good. Three. So if you guys can't see that, I'm going to go ahead and show you. Here's one row straight across. One, two, and here's a third one. So we have three rows. Very good. And how many columns? Somebody besides somebody I've not heard from. How many columns? Cynthia, go ahead. Six. Six columns. So if you guys can see, I'm going to scoop my, sorry, my cameras are in the way. If you look, there's one vertically. One, two, three, four, five, and six columns. So we have three rows and we have six columns. So our next step when we solve this is, when we're doing it as a multiplication problem, is to multiply those columns. So we're actually gonna look at what are gonna be the numbers when we talk about our multiplication equation. What times what? I don't need the answer, I just need the two numbers we're gonna multiply, the two factors. Somebody who I have not heard from. Jay, go for it. Say it one more time, Jay. Try to be a little bit louder because you're it was really quiet. Three times six. Good. So we're gonna have three times six. <clears throat> so here's one of the nice things about an array and making an array to help you solve a multiplication equation. If you don't know what three times six is, that's a math fact that hopefully we're practicing and we know by now, but if you don't know what the um product is you can always if you drew an array go back and count every object in the array so if you didn't know three times six you could count every one of these circles in your array to get your answer to the multiplication or you could skip count right you could skip count by threes or you could skip count by sixes because you can see them in the picture who can tell us what is three times six somebody that i haven't heard from yet derek what is three times six You're muted. 18. 18, very good, thank you. So we get the answer, three times six equals 18. 
if we wanted to, now hopefully again, this is a math fact we don't need to do that with, but if we wanted to, we could count one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way across till we get to 18. Or we could go six, 12, 18. Or we could count by threes, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. All right, it just depends on what you're more comfortable with doing, but that's the nice thing about drawing an array. It helps you skip count or it helps you count if you don't know the math fact. So let's look at another one. Raise your hand if you can tell me the number of rows, the number of rows that go left to right in this array. Guadalupe, how many rows are in that array? Six. Six, very good. So if you guys look, you go one, two, oh, are there six? Three, four, five, six rows. Very good. How many columns are there in this array? How many columns? Corbin, how many columns are there? Six. Very good, six. So if we go vertically, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have six rows and six columns. So what is our multiplication equation going to be? What times what? Ania, I saw your hand go up really fast. Six times six. Very good, six times six. Just like the last one, if we had to skip count by six as we could, if we had to count every M&M, &M, hopefully we were getting better at that, but we could do that to help us find the answer if we had to. Does anybody know the answer to six times six? Henry, what is it? 36. 36, very good, sir. So we have that six times six equals 36 is represented right here. I'm not gonna count them all, but if I counted every single M&M, &M, that would, there would be 36 m and sitting there, right? But we're, we don't need to count all of them. We, we already know that one. So I'm going to have you guys use your whiteboard or a um, piece of paper and a pencil. And we're going to actually together create an array to show six times seven. All right. So we're going to do this together. We're going to kind of walk through it together. So that first number tells us how many rows that there are going to be. So what's the first number in the equation? Six. Six, thank you. Yeah, when I ask an open-ended question like that, I don't have a problem with you guys unmuting. Was that Michael? Yeah. Thank you, Michael. All right, so I'm gonna have six rows, and who can raise their hand and tell me how many I'm gonna have in each row? A little bit trickier. CJ, how many are you gonna have in each row? You're gonna have six. I'm gonna have six rows. How many in each row? Going once. One. Not one. So that's what, look, we're doing six times seven, right? So that means I'm gonna have six rows. So I'm gonna have seven in each row. So my first row, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm gonna do that how many times? How many times am I going to make those rows of seven, Denise? Six. Six times. Thank you. So that's one. Now, the nice thing is I'm just going to count seven every time until I get to the six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's two rows. You should be doing this with me. I see too many people on their screens looking around the room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven there's three rows one two three four five six seven four rows got two more one two three four five six seven five rows and my last row one two three four five six seven so now i have six rows of seven and now i can kind of find my answer to six times seven if I need to, I can count every last dot on there. I'm going to keep 
saying that. Alex, do you know the answer to six times seven? I'm going to give you a minute to figure it out because I think you can figure it out using your array. Uh, 34. Close. Aseel, what would you get? Oh, man. <gasps> I got 42. That's correct. 42. So, Aseel, did you just know that math fact, or did you skip count? How did you get 42? Okay. So, I put in six. I put in, like, six rows. And then I put sevens on those six rows. And then I just added 14 for three fourteens because seven plus seven equals 14. And then I added those 14 up and I got seven, uh, 42. Okay, so that's a great strategy. So if you guys didn't, couldn't tell what she's saying, she said these two rows together are 14 because like, she knows seven plus seven is 14. And these two rows together are 14. And then these two rows together are 14. So she took all those rows, got the 14s, then she added those 14s together to get 42. Awesome strategy. Did anybody else get 42 a different way? Going once, going twice. Could have counted every last dot, right? Could have skipped counted by six or sevens. It just depends on how you want to do it when you use an array. I'm going to have you try one on your own, all right? So I'm going to have you use a whiteboard and create your an array, an array to show the problem seven times eight. I'm going to give you three, four, I'll give you four whole minutes, four whole minutes to draw your array and have an answer. I'm going to give you a grade right now on this to make sure you're participating. So I'm giving you four minutes. In the end of four minutes, you have to show me on your camera your array. It's okay if it's not correct, but I want to see that you are at least participating in the lesson. So either on a paper or a whiteboard, you have four minutes to make an array and try to find the answer. Four minutes. I'm setting a timer. On your mark, get set, go. You guys have about two minutes and 30 seconds left. Got two minutes, two minutes.
I got my answer. Done. Derek, do you have a question? Are you wanting to share yours? I got my answer. Okay. Well, I'm going to have everybody show me their boards or their papers here in 14 seconds. 10, 5, And zero. All right, flip your boards up and show me your boards or papers, whichever. Oh, Alex, you're so close. And yeah, I think you got to look at yours, and yeah, see if you have one extra row. Dunya, nice job. Corbin, nice. I think yours says 56. Nice job. You're very close, Cynthia. Henry, I think you – so um, we'll go ahead and go ahead and put boards down. Thank you, everybody, for showing them. I think we had a few people who put an extra row in there because I had a lot of people who got 64, and 7 times 8 is 56. So if you had one extra row, eight rows and eight columns, that would be 64. So my bet is there were some folks who put one extra row in there, and there were some people who were like one or two off, and that means they probably just counted wrong by one or two. So it's super, that's close. That's why you got, make sure if you have room to make the dots a little bit bigger than maybe you wanted to, or leave a little bit extra space, that way they're even and you can count them a little bit more easily. All right, but 56 is the correct answer. Nice job to a lot of you guys, I saw the correct answer. So your job today, there's gonna be an array quick check, all right? And then you're gonna have dream box lessons because the array quick check is not very long. And then your dream box lessons, you should have time to do dream box. So I should get on today and see about everybody has dream box lessons done. All right, I'm gonna go through really quick how to get to the array quick check. And then I'm gonna have you do one more thing before you can leave and go get started on math.